Hey folks and friends, welcome home. I'm Madison Canary, your Sour Beer Queer, and this is the Sour Beer Queer Ginger Edition. And I am coming at you with my first one-on-one -on -one interview. I am bringing <laughs> love it. I am bringing you my friend Rendy Williams. She is a neuromechanics coach and duo athlete, and she is here to talk about hard kombucha and all kinds of good healthy stuff. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited. I love you. Bring so much like enthusiasm and expression to everything. So I was super excited to be here with you. And Aww, thanks. Do something different. So this idea was born when I was over at Randy's house. <laughs> Uh, we were having dinner and we started drinking on this very, very delicious um, local roots hard kombucha. So this is the Cali Mule and this has a hard kombucha with lots of ginger in it. And as we were drinking it, we realized a couple things. We both love fermentation, we both love ginger, and we are both redheads. So we are coming at you with the ginger edition. <laughs> It just kind of happens. <laughs> the ginger edition of uh, Sour Beer Queer. So we have Local Roots Cali Mule, and then which one did you choose? Uh, so I also brought the Flying Embers, which is out of Ojai, California, and this one is a ginger and oak, but mm. it has some adaptogen blend with it. So it also has turmeric, ashwagandha, and astragalus. Mm. She's so fancy. <laughs> she knows words like adaptogen. It's so good. So what I figure we're going to do is we'll crack open one of these, we'll share it, we'll do a little kind of taste testy of it and then we'll have some conversation before we work our way into the next one. Fantastic. Cool. Well, allow me. <laughs> <laughs> so this local um, local roots hard kombucha, Cali Mule, six percent. And then one thing we were actually noticing is it only has two grams of sugar, but has 152 calories. And that's a lot more than this one. It is. Yeah. And we can't quite figure out what that's about. But I am really excited to dive into it. Well, I must I must admit, we've had this one before. We did have this one since this is what started this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, this one that gave birth to this whole concept. <laughs> so if you look at it, there's a lot of good um, carbonation to it. It has a light yellow kind of caramely fla uh, se flavor, scent, vision, color. color. <laughs> there it is, you guys, my friends. We got this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Let's try it. So give it a little scent. Smells a lot like ginger. It's very ginger smell. So if you like ginger, this is. This so is I have this saying that I'm basically just always trying to make my stomach feel better. Okay. Like my whole entire life, I've had what they call in my family the Andrew stomach. So Andrew is like my mom's mom's like the maiden name, and we have this chronically awful stomach. Everything that happens in our life goes straight to the stomach, and so all I'm ever trying to do is make my stomach feel better. That's all. That's why I care so much about poop. I talk a lot about poop. Okay. Because I'm just always trying to make my tummy feel better, and so smelling this, I just already feel my stomach like settle, which is interesting. So I have worked with a lot of people with IBS and IBD and uh, Crohn's colitis specifically, but uh, ginger is something that is great for digestion and it is a anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, but it is specifically known to help with IBS and IBD. So a lot of people do take it if they're nauseous, upset stomach, um, digestive issues, uh, disorders. So, mm. yes. Wow. Health-wise, there's a lot of benefits to ginger. So what I always wonder about, because I talk a lot about this a lot with the sour beer as well, is that we have the lactobacillus and we have the like beneficial bacteria in there. But once we've carbonated and fermented and created alcohol content, is there any health benefit? Oh, good question. Right? I kind of just feel like I'm like, it's too good to be true. Right? Um, I can't be getting tipsy <laughs> and also really doing something. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, alcohol naturally comes in the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's a great question. I haven't done a whole lot of research about that specifically. Okay. But I do know that a lot of, I mean, these are teas. Mm -hmm. And so, Tea is also great for you, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Um, if you're getting the probiotics and all that benefit from tea and alcohol is naturally occurring from that, it can't be that bad, right? <laughs> you hear it here first, friends. 
our neuromuscular trainer told us <laughs> that it's fine. We are doing good things for our body. Gut health. Drink more. Digesting it well, getting Drink gut bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, okay, so what I love about this hard kombucha, the scent of ginger and then the taste of ginger, and not only the taste, but it has that, like eating ginger is almost like a drying sensation in the mouth. Yeah. And I really enjoy that. That's why I like sour beer is okay. that drying sensation. And so to me, I take a sip and it has that ginger and then it dries. Okay. And I really enjoy it. What's your experience of it? Um, I get what you're saying about the drying now. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't have picked up on that because that's not something that would stand out to me. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have any carrying on aftertaste. Mm. So mm -hmm. like it's, you taste what you taste and you know what you're gonna expect and it doesn't change throughout. Like it's just that, that flavor. Mm -hmm. That's very true. There's no aftertaste to it. Yeah, it doesn't like linger. It doesn't, it's not, mm -hmm. doesn't kick you. There's nothing that like, oh, I taste that, you know, later mm -hmm. it changes the longer it's in your mouth or sits with you or the more that you have. <laughs> I feel like there's like a little bit of like a coat, just like a little bit of a coat. Hmm. You don't get a coat? No. Mm, okay. Because you know what? You know what we both love to drink that does kick you in the end? Tequila. Tequila. Yeah. That's our other love in this world. It is. That's really yes. what bond in this world. Um, I don't know how long until Sour Bear Queer does tequila tastings. I'm so here. But you're definitely going to be my first yes, guest when we move into that new front okay. frontier. <laughs> I just, there's so many good kombuchas. There's so many good sour beers. There's just so much out there. And I just, I still have yet to develop that palette for tequila where I can like sip it and taste it and experience the differences. Okay. You know? Yep. Like uh, this, I can like sip it and I can, I can have a different experience. Tequila, I'm just like, yes, I can. <laughs> That's all I get. <laughs> I can tell this is tequila. That's all I need to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got into, um, more of the hard kombuchas because I am not particular about beer. I don't like beer. I've never have, mm -hmm. but I love ciders for a long time. And then I've been drinking kombucha before they were hard kombuchas. And when I was hearing about them and saw a couple, I'm like, okay, I'm interested. I've got to try this. And it's just kind of become a thing of like, what are all the locals and what is this? And how does that make the flavor taste different and mm -hmm. the amounts of sugar. So neither one of these have a lot of added sugars, but you will find a lot of them out there that have like 14 or 16 grams of sugar Oof. added to them. Yeah. And that's like one of those things where you can have one or two and you're going to have a nasty hangover. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. It's like drinking it, you already have a headache. Like you're not even done with your drink and you already have a headache. And so also we're doing good gut stuff and then you add all that sugar, it's like, am I completely reversing all the good benefits of this by now having all the added sugar. So I wonder if that actually answers the question I was just asking you yes. is, is there any health benefits? So it's not necessarily the alcohol that would cancel out the health benefits. It's more the, the sugar. sugar. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, okay. Keeping it lower sugar, yes. keeping the fermentation. We're totally above board. We're good. We're doing great. <laughs> Cheers we're doing to that. Great. That's just like, like we're doing so great. So is that why you chose these ones? I mean, obviously we were doing ginger. That was the theme. That's the theme. Yeah, ginger edition. Yes. But why else, low sugar, why else did you choose these? Um, local, easier mm -hmm. to find. So mm -hmm. these are ones I've been, um, and a Whole Foods delivered to my door recently with all this stuff going on. Hashtag and because, COVID. yes, not mm -hmm. only COVID, I have a puppy and all the time between training and with my dog, I don't want to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they do, they will deliver these to your door. <laughs> so delivered. Don't have a Whole Foods uh, ben discount code, which I did. Yes. So that would be amazing. Holler at me, Whole Foods. <laughs> I want your discount code. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to creep above eight subscribers before Whole Foods is coming at me, but that's okay. But all these you can get at Whole Foods. So. One video at a time. Yeah. Um, and so what is your relationship? Because you are an athlete. You are like a fine-tuned machine. I just picture you eating nothing but protein and spinach and egg whites just all the time. That's just what I picture Randy getting home from her 30-mile bike ride and being like, here's my egg whites and my spinach. <laughs> So what is your relationship with alcohol, especially when you're training, when you're not training? How do you feel it differently in your body? Because I know you're like, you're so healthy. So what, how yes. does that affect you? Um, so I definitely drink less when I'm training hard, uh, especially if I'm training for a race or something of that nature. Um, I've noticed that if I'm doing hard kombuchas, it is 
something that kind of calms me down from hard training because I'm usually revved pretty high. Mm -hmm. So all my you know adrenal glands are going. It's hard sometimes for me to like calm down and go to sleep. So I can have one or two of these and it's enough to like calm me down and feel refreshing after mm -hmm. a workout mm -hmm. and kind of like chill. But it doesn't cause the inflammation and it's not, I don't have a hangover the next day. Um, and I probably have kombucha four days a week, mm, you know, okay. just two or three, mm -hmm. especially after, like I said, it's refreshing after a hard workout. But um, when I'm training hard, I can't drink a whole lot. So. Yeah. so it's like when you're like really, really training, you basically cut it out. But I'll, I'll still have once yeah. a week, something like that. It totally. Be, a yeah. little treat. A little yeah. treat. And mm -hmm. um, it, they're, they're great. I love them. Mm, yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally get it. So I pre-COVID, taught like 10 to 22 classes a week. Okay. And I always, always notice the difference. So if I have like one or two drinks, like you said, before I go to bed, calming down, especially if they're low sugar, just tequila or like a hard kombucha, or that's also why I love sour beer, it can be a lot lower in sugar, then I'm fine. I wake up the next day, I feel inspired, I feel connected. If I if like if you just like go hard on the alcohol or if you decide I was a whiskey girl for a long time. Ooh. I <laughs> So this one time. <laughs> I was going to say in my younger days. <laughs> so this one breakup specifically. I drank I went to this like bar right here in Irvine called the Old Dubliner. Shout out to the dubs and there. I drank nothing but Double Jack and Coke. Oh. I believe I started at three o'clock in the afternoon and it was like one of those like I was texting on my friends and so like my friends were like dropping by to like check on me and like buy me a drink, you know, like being supportive. And so I was just like holding down a corner at the dubs and as they dropped in, buy me a drink, but up and buy me a drink drop and so by So technically they were enabling you. Absolutely. Okay. You know, <laughs> Let's just call it what do. it is, right? All the best friends do. <laughs> And so by our, so at this point, by the time I left, it was 2 a.m. So I'd been there for 11 hours. I stumbled, I clearly stumbled out and looked at some bushes to my right and was like, those look really comfortable. And I just like tucked into a little ball and like rolled into the bush and closed my eyes, immediately passed out. I was woken up at 6.30 in the morning by a security guard. Well, at least you slept in the bushes and you didn't ralph in the bushes. No, I didn't. I ralph. slept. Okay. I woke up. I had spiders all over me, which was the worst part. Oh. I was covered in spiders and bug bites. But I just like woke up and was like, whatever, 22. Yeah. <laughs> like just I like, kept walking. Like just didn't even like phase me. And uh, was it that moment that you switched and you didn't do? I wish I could say that. Oh, true. Okay, no. I really. Well, wish it I usually could takes say a couple true. times, right? Yeah. yeah and well, and also it's like. Well, this is what's so interesting. So one of my reasons I'm starting this channel is that I was raised Mormon. I was raised LDS and there's a lot of shame around drinking. Okay. And so I noticed as they transitioned out of being Mormon and into like a secular adult, I noticed my relationship with alcohol was really unhealthy because it was something that I wasn't allowed to do. Okay. So yeah. what do you do with something you're not allowed to do? You, do you like more. binge it, you cover yeah. it in shame, you cover yeah. it in guilt, you like get all weird about it. Mm -hmm. And so that was definitely in that phase. Like I said, I was 23. That was definitely in that phase of like binge drinking, unhealthy, didn't want to talk about it, definitely didn't appreciate it. It was a means to an end and that was it. And then I've noticed as I've gotten older and I'm very happy to say that as I've gotten older, obviously your palate changes, first of all, hangovers get worse, second of all. But on top of that, I also just started to realize, I'm like, I'm putting something into my body. I should enjoy it and I should appreciate it and I should respect it and I should treat it with respect and also treat my body with respect. Absolutely. And that was like kind of a long time. Like what was your, when you were younger, have you always been healthy or? No. Um, so I've definitely gone through a drinking and partying stage. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of, like I was running less, I got away from being the high school athlete and I used to do junior Olympics and all that stuff and kind of went through this phase of like trying to find the balance of that. So I went to the other extreme of partying, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you first turn 21. And then I moved out here and didn't know anyone, moved to California from Arkansas and was like, how do you meet people? And I started living at the bar out yeah, here. So yeah. it, I quickly noticed that 
uh, I didn't like the person I was either by drinking mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. um, and so finding this, this balance for me has been like, I want to really be that hardcore athlete and, and love my body. And I work out because it shows me what I, my body's capable of, but I also want to like be able to be social and be like yeah. balanced and have fun. Um, and from the neuromuscular side, mm -hmm. knowing what alcohol or too much alcohol does to the brain and your balance system. So it throws your vestibular system off, which is why like people sway and walk. Tell and... me what a vestibular <laughs> system is. Uh, so the vestibular <laughs> system is the, basically it's the fluid in your ears is the easiest way to oh, put it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So like when the ear doesn't equalize or pop, um, like if you're flying or you go scuba diving, um, if you're drinking alcohol and you already have a compromised or weakened vestibular system, if you go to get on a bike later that day or mm -hmm. the next day, mm -hmm. um, it can definitely change your sense of balance. Mm -hmm. And when you're in more of a fight or flight, you're not going to move with as much ease, flexibility. Your brain won't let you create as much like power and force because it's like, don't go that fast. I'm not mm. in a state where I feel like homeostasis and comfortable doing that. Mm. Um, so that's another reason why I'm like, I can have a little bit when I train, just enough to like calm down and be sociable. but. I can't drink hard and train hard, mm. um, and I've I've learned to find that balance. Kind mm. of, and now you teaching yoga, mm -hmm. there's a balance for you. You learn just like how much your body can take, mm -hmm. and still be sociable and yeah. still be fit, and yeah, and still show up and be inspired. That's the biggest thing for me is yeah. I notice that brain fog. Like if I drink heavily the night before to show up to teach a yoga class, which I take as a very sacred duty. Okay. If I show up and I'm foggy and I'm fuzzy and I'm nauseous and I'm not present and I'm hungover, A, I feel awful because I'm not doing my job. And then two, I just, I also am like, I'm not a perfectionist, but I, I take it very sacredly. And so then if I can't do my job, why would I want to keep doing something that makes it that way? And so it's like, you have to figure out if you want to keep it in your life, you want to keep anything in your life. Yeah. You have to figure out how to make it a healthy balanced thing to keep in your life. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got on the kombuchas. That Yay. works. It works for me. <laughs> awesome. And I'm so excited to dive into this one too, because oh, this one sounds okay. so good. Okay. So after we decided to do the ginger edition, um, I feel mm -hmm. like Rendy basically just like, <laughs> like did a Google search I was of like, all ginger kombuchas <laughs> and showed up with such an amazing selection. And so this is the second one, and this one is really special. So tell me all about this one. Um, so. I'm, number one, it's the Flying Embers, which is an Ojai company, um, but it is ginger and oak, and you can definitely taste the oakiness mm -hmm. uh, to it, but it has the adaptogen blend of turmeric, ashwagandha, and astragalus. Mm -hmm. So turmeric is a... <sighs> turmeric stops uh, the perception of pain. Interesting. So it's an anti-inflammatory, but also pain lives in the brain. For a lot of people that um, you experience it maybe in your knee your back whatever but it's a signal that comes from your brain and so it's actually a pain blocker hmm. um, so turmeric is very very useful for people that have a lot of inflammation or a lot of chronic pain issues mm -hmm. but then you've got the ashwagandha mm -hmm. you've got the astragalus um, and so there's there's a lot to this that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And when I picked it out, I was like, okay, we've got a lot of herbs in here, mm -hmm. low sugar. This one is only 85 calories. Um, I know, it's fermented tea, so it can't be bad. It can't be bad. It can't be bad. Um, cool, serve it up, girl. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So I come at the um, ashwagandha and astragula from the Ayurvedic perspective. And so yoga has a sister science um, of Ayurveda. And so Ayurveda is actually how we balance the body. Yoga is actually how you balance the mind. Ayurveda is how you balance the body. And so Ayurveda is very concerned with your diet and what you eat. And in Ayurveda, um, ashwagandha and astragula are described as being the thing that everybody should be taking. So these are two, what they call adaptogens. They get into your system. They basically, I mean, I'm sure at high levels they can do something, but basically can't do anything bad and can only do good things, especially for your immune system. So definitely right now, definitely if you're training, definitely if you like to drink, definitely if you're being exposed to things, ashwagandha, astragula should be in your smoothies every morning or should be in your hard kombucha. Yes. So let's try this one out. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Totally different smell. Totally different. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just thinking. It doesn't have... This the is, ginger smell doesn't stand out. In yeah. Sun. This is like a warm ginger. Like yes. immediately. This is more the oak. Let's move over here. We get, we'll we'll yeah, do optics over here. <laughs> it's all about optics. 
Is that what I'm smelling? I think it is the the oak. It's the oak and the turmeric. Turmeric. I was gonna say the turmeric. It's the turmeric as well. And talk about like astringent or drying. Turmeric is so astringent and so drying. Oh, but it's like firecrackers in my mouth. It is definitely not sweet. Mm mm. That's why it's 85 so, calories. It's so yeah. much sugar. Mm -hmm. It definitely doesn't have any of the sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. Same coloring. Not nearly as carbonated. This local roots has really high carbonation. This one wasn't nearly as carbonated. True. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I Completely love- Completely different flavors. So different to be like- It is. It is. What's ironic is that it is less sugary, but I actually get more of like almost like an effervescent experience or like a sparkling oh, yes. experience okay. on my palate. Oh, no, it's really, it almost looks like it sparkles when I look at it. <laughs> Maybe I've had too many kombuchas, you guys. <laughs> my kombucha is sparkling. <laughs> I love it. It's a multi sensual experience. Oh. I told you it's very expressive. I love that. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. So speaking of very it. expressive, yes. I'm curious, how did Sour Beer Queer come about? Like, why that name? I mean, this is a great, great question. So, I've already told a little bit of the story of the reason I made my first video was that I was handed a delicious spicy mango cart and so immediately went to High Times, bought one of everything by Golden Road because I was just like, what? This is delicious and affordable. And so then like came back and looked at Garrett, my partner, and was like, I want to show you what I got. And he said, instead of showing me, why don't you just show the camera? And so that was the birth of having a sour beer, a fruit beer video. Okay. As I kind of sat with it, so like I filmed a video, I filmed another video. My first two don't have the Sour Beer Queer, like welcome. And so as I kind of sat with it and thought, what do I want this name to be? It actually kind of goes back to what we were, what we were talking about earlier, which is I realized that I'd spend the early part of my life um, rejecting, shaming, and feeling guilty about certain parts of myself. One part, because of the Mormon church, was, um, was drinking. Another part, hugely because of the LDS church was being queer. It's a big no-no. So I was actually sent through gay, gay reform when I was about 18. Um, not an enjoyable experience, don't recommend it. Um, came out the other end of it and even all the way through it, the whole time, never doubted the fact that I was queer, never did all the fact of the at the time, only word, for you. Exactly. Okay. At the time, the only word I had was gay. Like that was the only word I had, you know, I didn't have any wording yet. And so I was given this word gay because they kept telling me not to be it. And I just kept being like, but boobies. Like it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like all these like Bible verses and all these old men in suits being like, do, do, do. And I'm like, but motorboating, <laughs> like the, just, and I had always had a strong relationship with God, even before the, before I was Mormon, I was one of those kids that would like talk to angels and like, would pray, even though I didn't even know what praying was. My dad actually raised me, before I was at the Mormon church, my dad raised me atheist. And so there was no idea of a higher power and yet I always felt a higher power. Okay. And so I've always been very spiritually connected and I always felt very strongly that I, that I could speak to God, that God was part of my life and that God was important to me. Again, before I even knew the word God, this was important to me. And so then I go through the Mormon church, I go through this gay reform experience and the whole time, two things never changed. That I did not think that this is what God wanted. I did not think that this was God's belief. And two, that God made me the way I was and that the way I was made was being attracted to women and being attracted to now what I know as trans people and you know other people and being also attracted to having relationships and having identities that don't fall into the heteronormative like mainstream. So we're talking like just stereotypical gender roles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just always knew that and I never doubted it. No matter how many Bible verses, no matter how much like I was told that it needed to be different or wrong, no matter how many times my mom kicked me out of her house, I never, never, never doubted it. And so when I thought about, okay, well, this channel is me taking back or claiming my my um, wanting to talk about alcohol, alcohol being a part of my identity, alcohol not being covered in shame, alcohol just being part of who I am as an adult, it automatically also brought up 
oh, the other thing that I don't talk about and the other thing that even though I'm not, I don't feel any shame around it, it's not part of my day in, day out life because I have a male partner. Mm -hmm. We're in a very heteronormative relationship. We walk down the street, we look very straight. Because of that, my queer identity does not get expressed. And so, voice. exactly. Okay. So it's not at all being ashamed or guilty. It's just that it doesn't get expressed because it's not part of my day in day out life because of how I'm in relationship right now. So that is what caused Sarah. Which I'm Beer super Queer. happy about, by oh. the way. What? <laughs> I Thanks. like it. No, oh, it's pretty great. <laughs> you guys are amazing together. He's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I never. I honestly never pictured myself being in such a like straight, like simple relationship, but. I'm happy. Never say never. Yeah, never say never. never, say never. And what I love about the queer identity is that queer is not dependent on your partner. And so okay. saying that you're a lesbian, I I struggled saying I was a lesbian if I wasn't with a woman, but I very much feel that I can I very much feel comfortable and right saying that I am queer even though I'm with a man because queer is still my identity. It doesn't depend on male, female, otherwise non-binary that I'm making love with or having sex with. So that also makes me think of what is your queer identity? So just a little bit that we've chatted about this idea of queer, being non-binary, being not heteronormative, being defining your own way, like your own path, your, your expression that is not necessarily what the world around you wants you to have or thinks you should have. What parts of yourself kind of does that bring out or apply to? I mean, the first thing that makes me think, and I've never been asked that question in that way, mm -hmm. but I was always labeled as the tomboy mm -hmm. because I, I, I've been good at sports. I wasn't like super girly in the traditional standards, like ponytail, no makeup. Mm -hmm. um, I always had like a voice and would stand up, you know, for myself. And I can remember even at one point fighting my brother's fight for him at school. Like, mm -hmm. um, just didn't follow the the traditional male and female gender roles um, and so that's the first thing that I, I think of is that I was told I was a tomboy and I actually in the beginning used to take that as a, a negative mm. like that I I don't want to say I was an outcast but I just didn't fit mm -hmm. didn't really fit in mm -hmm. and then as I got older and I got into relationships I have noticed that there's definitely I definitely have a hard time finding someone I can communicate what the roles will be like because mm. it's not traditional for mm -hmm. me. Um, I'm a very independent person. A lot of that has to do with growing up without my dad. He passed away when I was 12 and mm -hmm. so I've learned to be very independent and I've traveled a lot on my own like all mm -hmm. over the world. Um, I don't I don't have to have someone doing something for me mm -hmm. and I definitely have like a voice about things like mm -hmm. I, I want to I want people to this is how I feel about it and this is like I like expressing that and having that deep conversation and so it can come across unfortunately in relationships come across as me challenging someone and so someone yes meaning men <laughs> it's definitely not the intention it's yeah. not the intention yeah. um but it, it that usually start to down downhill spiral in the, the relationships that I have chosen to be in, mm -hmm. and then so I'm learning that um, some people call it wearing the pants of the relationship. Some people call it that you're unintentionally emasculating. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, I've done all of these things, but it was never with malice. It was always just me being. I don't fit that typical role, like mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's my experience with it. I don't. I, that's. That's kind of what I think of. Yeah. <laughs> and I completely agree. And even hearing these stereotypes, like wearing the pants. Okay, so men can only wear pants. Or, you know, <laughs> or like emasculating. Why does a man's masculinity have anything to do with you or how they treat them? That sounds like sensitivity. And that's what's so ironic about, I feel like these roles that we are told we have to take on is they are so sensitive and so touchy because the moment, because they're not real, right? It's like they are playing the norm of man. And so then you have to play the norm of woman so that then they do not they do not feel emasculated. Right. Whereas it's like if they naturally, if that was who they were, then you, they wouldn't have to play it. And so you wouldn't have to play anything because it would just be them being themselves yeah. and it wouldn't challenge anything because it's like, this is me. 
And so instead, you not hitting the tennis ball to the, with the right hand challenges them to have to do a backhand. And now they're like, oh, but I have always learned I should do a front hand. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like when it's naturally who you are, it's not a challenge to for someone else to just naturally be who they are. Mm -hmm. But when someone else is holding up a facade, then when you don't agree to that, it challenges the facade. And that's interesting that you say it that way. I can remember saying a couple times, like, me just being me seems to trigger you. Mm -hmm. And I've said that before, and I'm like, I don't understand why I I feel like or notice that in relationships. And mm -hmm. so um, I have a strong sense of what would typically be called a masculine, mm -hmm. you know, role. And, there, and there's definitely feminine things about me, mm -hmm. but can do it on my own <laughs> like I can yeah. you know um, super sporty super travely mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of something that would be no I think that's perfect yeah. I think that's really perfect because this whole idea of queer too is it's like we need to realize how much we have internalized what is normal and then realize that because we have internalized what is normal, we then internalize the self-hatred or the self-deprecation when we don't fall into a norm that we don't even agree with. And that's what's so ironic, is I'm hearing you be like, it's just natural to me to be independent, quote unquote, more masculine. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so sorry that the men are the only one who can be independent. But that's like the stereotype, right? Is that I'm more independent, I'm more masculine, I'm more on my own. I love to race. Yeah. Which means I'm competing I'm and I'm challenging and I'm mean, too competitive. Yeah. And I'm like, I love to race because it pushes me to be my best. Mm hmm. Absolutely. But, yeah. And so then, at least for me, I guess I won't speak for you, but I'd love to hear your experience. At least for me, when I found myself not living up to these standards or these expectations, I then found myself in a lot of like self-doubt or like kind of like self-hatred. I kind of like turned against myself because I wasn't living up to an expectation that A, I didn't agree with, and two, I didn't even know that I had internalized. But it was just so pervasive in the culture. It was like the water that I swam in. So I didn't even realize it was a thought that I could doubt. And so have you always felt like you could doubt or question gender roles, gender normativity, like gender performance, or? I, you know what, to a certain degree, yes. And I have I sports that. and competing to thank for that. Yeah, Because I've totally. always kept that in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was a runner forever, third grade. Mm -hmm. My mom was like, you got too much energy, please go run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, I've always been competing on some type of sport or level and I feel like that's given me an outlet to express myself mm -hmm. um, and keep a voice. And every time I'm, I'm out there like training or something, it's, and it, it's an empowering sense for me which keeps me voicing who I am. Now it's caused problems like even family and my mom before and like mm -hmm. is, uh, certain people saying like why do you feel like you have to be like we should grow up and change and blah 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 and I'm like but this is just part of my part of my identity part of what I love because I choose it not because I'm attached to it for negative reasons mm -hmm. um, I, I think during that little phase I mentioned 21 and part and or moving out here and drinking a little bit I definitely numbed that down trying to like Mm. Where do I fit in, maybe mm -hmm. for a short period of time? And I wasn't as vocal about it, but I missed it so much, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I feel like I've been pretty pretty good about always speaking that truth. Um, what's interesting is that it attracts men to me, that confidence, but it doesn't keep them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I find that so fascinating. Mm -hmm. I'm like... From a distance or what you saw, you really, really like yeah. liked me this way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm too much. Cage bird syndrome. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. I have so I lived through that so many times. I lived through that experience so many times where you are the freest 
smartest and by smartest I mean you actually speak your mind as opposed to most women that have been trained to, to not speak their mind mm -hmm. and so you're the freest like smartest most spoken woman most independent woman in the bar and so then the like biggest strongest man is like oh yeah my equal but then their dream and their vision is like I'm just gonna put her in a little cage and she's just gonna be my little birdie and I'm just gonna like set her in a corner <laughs> And she'll just like live in a little cage and it'll be great. She'll be so happy in there. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna show her what yes. she really wants that yes. she doesn't know. <laughs> oh my God. If I had a fucking dime for every time I was like, I'm going to show you what you really want. <laughs> vomit all over me and you and this whole relationship <laughs> yeah. but it is it's like a syndrome this whole like cage the bird and then it it like creates also this feedback loop of oh no now you're no longer what I was attracted to because now you're being what I want you to be but you're not being enough of what I want you to be so I'm not attracted like it's it's a it very is. toxic feedback loop yes. that you get into once you allow the the bird owner to trap you. I don't even know what to call it. I don't either. But you do, you kind of attract assholes. <laughs> so, in the interest of Sour Beer Queer, what I do for every beer that I drink is I rate it on the friendliness scale. So this is a scale from one to five. Okay. And it rates on if someone were to come up to you and say, eh, I don't really like hard kombucha. Five is very friendly. It means you'd give it to them, you'd be like, try this trust me you'll change your mind they'll <laughs> sip it it'll change their mind they'll love it one is someone comes up to you and it's like i don't like hard kombucha and you're like oh then you're not gonna like this okay so yeah. like not got friendly. It. yeah okay. so what do we think for local roots hard kombucha cali mule where are we at? five absolutely i agree five, five. very <laughs> friendly if someone doesn't like hard kombucha you're still gonna love this it's gingery it's sugary it's an enjoyable palate experience it very, very friendly. We're definitely going five over here. Okay, well what about this bad boy? So flying embers, hard kombucha, ginger, and oak. Zero grams of sugar, net carbs. What do we think? Uh, that's more of like a two to three on this what part. Two to three? And, and here's why. If you don't like kombuchas, it definitely has more of like a kombucha, almost bittery. There's mm. not as much Mm -hmm. flavor that's kick like yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's why I would pick that what do you think I would think there's enough ginger to it that we're at a three okay yeah I wouldn't put it as low as a two I feel like there's enough ginger to it that, that there's a three the oak is a little sophisticated so that's mm -hmm. what it like doesn't get us any higher than that but I would definitely put us in about the three realm I would hand it to someone who already likes kombucha but not necessarily hard kombucha okay so there we go we have a very friendly and we have an approachable coming out here right here. <laughs> yeah. So we did um, local roots, hard kombucha, Kali Mule, and flying embers, hard kombucha, ginger, and oak. We appreciate you so much joining us for Sour Beer Queer Ginger Edition. Please do subscribe. I release uh, beer reviews, hard kombucha reviews every Tuesday and Friday. And join me over on my Instagram, which is the Sour Beer Queer, to give me any combats. Um, combats. <laughs> To give me any comments and feedback you might have, I'm open to all your recommendations. Well, I had such a great conversation with you, Randy. Thank you so much for joining me. And how can people find you, get in touch with you? Uh, so social media, I have an Instagram page. It is mygreatestself.today. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one way. Um, and I'm, why would people want to get in touch with oh, you? Oh, great question. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> other than to like give you their digits, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so I actually work with a lot of clients, local and online, especially since COVID, but just questions about body health, chronic pain issues. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've kind of got, I've been really blessed that I've got to work with a lot of things, Alzheimer's, dementia. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with my first kid that had, was autistic recently, and mm -hmm. so like, I don't know, every experience or everyone that reaches out to me is actually something new and an experience that I learn and I love that too and I'm able to help more people so uh, it could be personal training and then my my love what I'm really good at my niche running so if you have running related questions I've been running since the third grade I am a running coach mm -hmm. I would love to help you 
running, cycling, physical therapy, mental therapy, yes. occupational therapy. <laughs> I mean, these things are not backed by the FTC, but I would say you could go to her with all these concerns. Plus, if you happen to, I don't know, be a 40 something year old, handsome man, maybe like a, a good nose, solid features, <laughs> good Christian upbringing, middle, I don't know, like maybe slide into her DMs, just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me and have a great day.